And you can see obviously the highest of the last 20 days is right in here. And the lowest of the last 20 days is right here. Now, obviously, this is a relatively equal low. So the liquidity pool is going to be resting right below that. Okay. Now, when we're looking for previous daily ranges, highs and lows, again, it's not simply what was yesterday's high and low. What I'm referring to is the last 20 days range in terms of IPTA data range that's going to form a basis of discount or premium. So when we're looking at the PD arrays inside the last 20 days we're going to go through the list of the PD array matrix from premium to discount and then also what we're going to be focusing primarily on is the liquidity that rests below the lows. Okay so I have all of the key lows from day one that particular day, its low is recorded and extended across the chart. Then day two, since it was the previous day, not Sunday, every candle has an X above it, it's a Sunday in here. So we're disregarding all Sundays when we're doing uh, the PD arrays. Look back in 20 day if the data ranges. Now it's the same with 40 day and 60 day. We're ignoring again the Sundays. Then day three, we're using that low. Why that low? It's because it's a swing low. And on day nine, we're using that low because it was one of the strongest up moves. And it's the next previous day's low from day one. Now again, do not be confused by my terminology saying that it's the previous day. It's a previous day inside of the range defined by IPTA. So in this model, we're only using the last 20 days. And then again, you can see day 13, it's low as well. Okay, so we have a liquidity pool resting below day 13 and day 9, relatively equal lows. So we're anticipating a run below those lows as a draw on liquidity. Disregard the liquidity void to the lower left. We're not drawing any special attention to that right now on dealing with scalping. Okay, so behind that whole price structure, this is what led the analysis. The high was a rejection block, ran through. Okay, so in other words, the rejection block is here. Price runs through it, making a higher high. Did not take the wick out. We don't need that. But this is a turtle suit reversal pattern. And if you look at your dollar index, when we look at the bodies like this, okay, you'll see that the dollar index is un unwilling to make a comparable lower low. Okay, so even though we didn't have that higher high seen here on cable, we did have it in the form of the rejection block right here. Okay, so the highs up close. That's what we're seeing right now here. Then it's a subsequent breakdown. Then we have the market structure shift right here. Price breaks down, trades back up into the breaker here. And then we have a deeper move back into the breaker here also. And we're moving back into the range of these up close candles here. So this will be one full order block in the bearish sense. But the gray shaded area is focusing primarily on the bearish order block. Price trades up into it and then starts to fall away. And then we come right back up into the bearish order block, which is the last up close candle here inside the breaker as well. So we have some layering effects of all the PD arrays from a premium standpoint. Price trades up into it on day one. That's what this day is here. And this is what I gave you on Sunday night. That means this candle right here, while it was forming, I was telling you that the high was going to be right in here for the week. And we would be looking for a run down below here as a potential run on liquidity. Now for a scalper it's good to have these ideas because we're working off the daily time frame. Everything I've taught you in the mentorship is being drawn into this. So I'm taking a great deal of liberty in expecting that you know the things I'm showing you here. Okay what a breaker is, what a rejection block is, turtle soup, market structure shift. You all should know what that mark uh, what market structure shifts are. But then we have the liquidity pool resting below equal lows here, and then obviously the bearish order block. 
So while it's like this, okay, we have ranges in here to work within. We have the highest high, the lowest low, and right in here, we're at or above equilibrium, and we're anticipating a move lower. So going back to the IPTA data range, you can see how price did in fact reach through all of these lows. Okay, and then we're going to take a closer look. We're going to drop down into a lower time frame at these same price levels or these red lines. Okay, so we have an hourly chart here. So you can see how price has gravitated towards moving to and just below these levels. Okay, so IPTA is seeking liquidity below these known price points. So if we have them on our chart, obviously we're going to be much more well informed than the retail minded traders or, dare I say it, some of the pseudo professional traders. Okay, so I shared this chart also in the forum and I want you to take note of how price did in fact seek liquidity below previous day's lows, that's what the PDL stands for, previous day low. It doesn't mean, and it's not defined specifically as yesterday's low, okay? And what I'm saying is it's a previous daily low, but it's defined as such inside of a range of the last 20 days. In this case here, we're looking at just to last Friday from the time of this recording, February 28th, 2018. So here's Friday's low. Okay, and here's Sunday's trading, and I gave you in analysis pre-week that this was going to probably be our optimal trade entry sell-off for the week. Now, I didn't know if it was going to be on Monday. I don't know, always know that, but that's the area at which I was looking for to trade to. So if we know that we're likely to see this scenario unfold, then Monday or Tuesday or potentially Wednesday, the market could have uh, rallied up to that price point. Now, since we saw all of this premium being built in, our eye goes immediately to this low right here because this is our anchor or fulcrum point. The low up to this high, this is going to be used for swing projection at the last slide of this presentation. So just remember that all this build up here from Friday going into Monday's high, that's all being built as a premium. And we'll look at that as a tool for grading our price swings and also looking for swing projections on the week. Okay, so now let's get into the nuts and bolts about this. We're going to be defining buy programs. Now, a buy program is simply when we're looking to be a buyer. What are we defining as what makes it a buy program? In other words, why are we only focusing on one side of the marketplace in this case of being a buyer? Well, buying only when the daily has taken out a swing high in the last 20 days if the data range and not in a premium. Buying can be considered at equilibrium of the daily range of the 20 day IPTA data range and parabolic expansion runs will be above the equilibrium level of the 20 day IPTA data range as it targets the previous day high and its liquidity pool above it. Okay, so we have our range here, premium and discount. We have the lowest low here and the highest high here. As price takes out this swing high here, right here, everything moving towards this level here could still be used for buys. This would be a daily time frame also. So these are daily candles. Okay, the buy entry process. When in a buy program, Monday through Wednesday is ideal buy days in New York session. Thursday can still be considered as a long as the liquidity remains for low resistance liquidity runs. In other words, if we haven't blown out the liquidity pool yet, Thursday still can be considered. But if I were trading that day, and it's rare that I do, but if I did, my leverage would be dialed way back. I'd probably be doing anywhere between 25% to 40% of what I would normally be trading in terms of leverage, simply because we're so late in the week long in a tooth on the range so I wouldn't be worrying about too much of uh, you know a gangbusters um, result or trying to get a big win. Between 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. this is all New York time 
on a five minute chart, we're going to be looking for a retracement lower against the London session momentum of the day. Using the bullish optimal trade entry pattern and keying off of the 62% level, notice I refined it just to that level. We're not looking for 70.5. We're not looking for 79% retracement level. We're looking specifically right at the 62% retracement level. But now since we're buying, we're going to add five pips for the spread for entry. You can see the example over here. We have our low right after the 7 a.m. time period. The market makes an attempt to rally, and then we start seeing a retracement. As soon as we start seeing a retracement, we run our FIB across the range. 62% retracement level right here, plus 5 pips. That puts us in around here. And price runs up, takes out the high here, and then continues to move higher. Long stop loss placement process. Using the low between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. New York time as your foundation to the long entry, place your protective sell stop at the low or five pips below it. That's right here. Do not move the protective stop until 20 pips has been scaled out of the position. Move the stop higher to lock in five to 10 pips after first scaling out or price moves above your New York session initial high. That means where you anchored your FIB prior to the trade entry. If prices run to your stop, do not take a re-entry on the trade. Long position targets. Take first scaling off just before returning to the initial high of the day or the high of the day. Take another scaling off at target one on your FIB tool. Take another scaling at target two on your FIB tool. If news is due out late New York, post noon time, again, New York time, leave a small portion on to see if a symmetrical price swing can be reached. If it does ever, intraday, hit a symmetrical price swing, close all the position. Now, there's going to be times when the market will continuously run and you'll regret having closed everything at the symmetrical price swing. Trust me when I tell you, more times than not, it's better to do it because it usually peters out and runs out of steam. Only a few instances out of a year, you're going to see how it just starts to go you know, careening past the symmetrical price swing. Unless we're in something, obviously, you know, very fast marketplace. Uh, it's not going to do that. It'll usually respect the symmetrical price swing, at least in terms of capping the daily range, especially if time of day overlaps like London close or 2 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon with, with bonds closing. Okay, so now we're going to define the sell program. Shorting only when the daily has taken out a swing low in the last 20 days if the data range and not in a discount. Shorting can be considered at equilibrium of the daily range of the 20-day if the data range. Parabolic expansion runs will be below the equilibrium level of the 20-day if the daily range as it targets the previous day low and its liquidity pool below it. Okay, so we're looking at the example here. And again, it's this cable. We have that higher high in terms of the bodies. We're defining the tw last 20 days here. Okay, and this is equilibrium. This is the lowest low and the highest high. So right in here, this is day one or Monday of this week of the recording. This is day one and we're trading right at and it was above equilibrium. This level was above equilibrium on Sunday before it ever traded there. Okay, so you see how these things start to overlap. We're gonna anticipate a run on the liquidity resting below here. Once we start moving below equilibrium and we have defined where liquidity may be running right here price will have a parabolic expansion run to get to that level in other words we're going to see big candles a lot of speed a lot of want to get to that level right in here okay there's our premium and discount levels defined as you've seen in the mentorship anything in the red which we saw defined on Sunday right in here. That was that optimal trade entry. 
on the hourly chart for cable, British Pound USD. And we can see this was day one. We did have a little, uh, a little bit of a wick there, and then it started the, the whole process of moving lower this week. Short entry process. When in a sell program, Monday through Wednesday is ideal sell days in the New York session. Thursday can be considered as short as the liquidity remains for a low resistance liquidity run. That means that the liquidity pool has yet to be probed or taken out from the daily time frame. Between 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. on a five minute chart, look for a retracement higher against the London session momentum of the day. Using the bearish optimal trade entry pattern and keying off of the 62% retracement level minus five pips for the spread for entry. So again, we have another example here. We have our initial New York high today. The market makes a run lower, retraces higher, gets right back to the 62% retracement level, but we don't trade short right there. We, we subtract whatever that 62% retracement level is minus five pips from that. And that's what our entry price would be. Okay. And then we would look for a run lower on short stop loss placement process. Using the high between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. New York time as your foundation to the short entry, place protective buy stop at the high or 5 pips above it. Do not move the protective stop until 20 pips has been scaled out of the position. Move the stop loss to lock in 5 to 10 pips after first scaling out or price moves below your initial New York session low after the trade entry. If price moves to your stop, no re-entry should be taken. Okay, you see that initial high of New York. It trades lower. And then we have a retracement back to the 62% retracement level. That sets up the signal. And our protective stop goes right to the high of the New York session, or where our FIB is anchored from, or five pips above it. Short position targets. Take first scaling off just before the returning to the initial low of the day or at the low of the day. Take another scaling off at target one on your FIB tool. Take something off at target two on your FIB tool. And if news is due out late New York at post noon time, New York time, leave a small portion on to see if it's a symmetrical price swing can be reached. Close all if this level is hit. 